Welcome back. This uh, unusual winter, unseasonably warm and dry, happened to leave to uh, lead to a red flag warning earlier this week. Dozens of Minnesota counties included in that. Plus, already this year, a wildfire in Wasika. The Minnesota DNR keeping a close eye on conditions and preparing for spring after this dry, record warm winter. Again, it is an unusual one. So here to talk about uh, what we can is DNR wildfire prevention specialist Karen Harrison. Karen, nice to meet you. Thanks yeah, for thanks us. for having me this morning. I know there's a lot we don't know about what, you know, we're going to have this spring. You know, what he has a crystal ball, but there's a lot that you're keeping track of. Uh, when this red flag warning popped up, some of us were kind of like, whoa, it's mid early March. This is unusual for this time of year. It, it, can you say at all how unusual this is? Yeah, it's quite unusual. I think it's probably the winter of 2011 into 2012 was the last time we were seeing wildfire activity throughout the winter. And we're seeing that again this year. So our staff has been monitoring kind of the fire potential pretty regularly throughout the winter and trying to get ready for the spring. Typically we see uh, wildfire activity pick up in late March, early April, and it moves south to north, but we've seen wildfires across the state already. The DNR has responded to over 80 wildfires in the last few weeks, um, over 4,000 acres, and so it's, it's a really big impact this year, and we're seeing a lot of potential throughout the whole spring. Yeah, that is a lot this early in the season. Talk about what you do to prepare and try to prevent that number from growing. Yeah, we have our predictive services unit, which is the, the group that's kind of monitoring and looking at what that potential is. So the wildfire potential March through May looks to be really high. So what we do is we prepare for that highest potential because we don't know how many wildfires they're going to be, how big they might be. So our field offices are already staffed. Our equipment is ready, our aviation is kind of prepped and ready to go as well to respond to a wildfire. The challenging part, like I mentioned, is we don't know how many they're going to be. In Minnesota, over 90% of wildfires are caused by people. So there's a lot of things that people can do, really simple things to help prevent those wildfires from starting in the first place. Talk about some of those because you have some resources, some maps that people can look to, you know, if there's particularly dry areas. But I imagine, I mean, we don't know, but I know I have friends that are already talking about, hey, let's make some camping plans. It's going to be, you know, the, the, the ground isn't as frozen as it is. They want to get out and do some of those types of things. Um, what are some of the recommendations you have for people when you say that 90% are caused by people? Yeah, so a, a big thing is to check the fire danger and burning restrictions map on our website. That's updated regularly as those conditions are changing. And fire danger can shift really quickly. And just like our weather here in Minnesota, we might have snow and then sunny skies later in the day. So it's important to check the fire danger and burning restrictions before you're going out to have a fire or doing activities that might create heat or a spark. And pay close attention this spring, especially because we are looking at some really high potential. Today, already two thirds of the state is high fire danger. And as we go into the afternoon, those temperatures warming up, some wind picking up, we could see some very high, especially in the southwest and uh, central areas of the state. Wow, and I know there's a lot that the DNR tracks, you know, all year round, but particularly this time of year, your specialty is in the wildfire prevention, but also um, some of your colleagues keep track of the, the lake conditions and the lake levels. And that's another question that many of us have, and the DNR is, is tracking that as well. Yeah, the ecological and water resources staff have a, a lake level monitoring program, and they have over 600 volunteers that help throughout you know, from ice out to ice in. And so they haven't finished doing the data yet for this spring, but what they were looking at in October for kind of the last um, data points were 64 percent of those lakes were below average or low going into the winter. So it'll be interesting to see what those numbers come in at this spring and how that might, the conditions of warm weather and little to no precipitation might affect that. Yeah, one of the many things 
a lot of us who love our great outdoors and want to keep them pristine yeah. are watching and waiting in just this unusual winter that we have and all the sort of uh, ripple effects of it. So Yeah, and it is really nice out. People are getting out earlier. They're doing, you know, recreating and having fun outside. And we definitely want people to be doing that. I think one of the big things that people can do to help prevent wildfires is making sure that their fire is out cold all the way. That's one of the biggest things. Those fires, especially if you're having a larger fire, anything over three feet high by three feet in diameter, you should have a burning permit for that. And But campfire or large uh, burn pile, make sure it's out cold. So you can use the back of your hand to kind of test for the heat and use water, drown, stir, check for lingering heat and make sure it's out all the way. Those are some good reminders. You can you can underdose it, but you can never overdose That's it. That's right. So, yes. <laughs> good reminder. All right, Karen, thank you. We appreciate your time very much. Thanks for having me.